Taylor Swift's colorful new music video caused controversy online. So before we get started, I'm really excited to say we have a sponsor. Thank you so much to Clue for sponsoring today's video. Clue is a free health app for women and people with menstrual cycles and features a period tracker, fertility window, and a birth control reminder. You can also track changes in your skin, hair, energy, cravings, mood, and cramps. The more you track, the more you can learn the hormonal patterns of your cycle and can unlock the power of your body. Clue is great because unlike other period tracking apps, Clue uses gender-neutral language and doesn't make assumptions about the gender of the person using the app, making it a great choice for trans and non-binary folks who want to track their cycle. Their website and social media is full of useful info about things like safer sex, coping with gender dysphoria, and how to find LGBTQ plus friendly healthcare. To download the app, click the link in the description box below or search period tracker in the app store and scroll down to the fourth option and choose clue. Now back to the tea. Please do not send any hate or threats to Taylor Swift, Eugene Lee Yang, or anyone else mentioned in this story. This video is meant to report on the news and give insight on the situation. June is Pride Month and Taylor Swift did some notable things for the LGBTQ community. On June 1st, she donated to the pro-LGBTQ media organization GLAAD, the Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation. GLAAD thanked Taylor for supporting the LGBTQ community. Also on June 1st, Taylor wrote an open letter to Lamar Alexander, the senior U.S. Senator from Tennessee, asking him to support the Equality Act, which would protect LGBTQ people from discrimination in the workplace, housing, and schools. The House of Representatives passed the Equality Act. Taylor explained the next step would be bringing the bill to the Senate. On June 14th, Taylor gave a surprise performance of her song Shake It Off at Stonewall Inn, a gay bar and a historic landmark that was the site of the 1969 riots that launched the LGBTQ rights movement. It was the 50th anniversary of the Stonewall Uprising. Also on June 14th, Rumors spread about a leaked concept for Taylor's upcoming music video for her new song, You Need to Calm Down. Katy Perry was a confirmed celebrity cameo in Taylor's video, and people suspected a kiss scene. Hey, uh, Taylor Swift, not to question you, but you know there's a leaked concept that you and Katy dress as fries and a burger and kiss. You know that's dumb, right? Please tell me you know it's dumb. Also, this isn't me making jokes or anything. If there is indeed a scene like that, you need to cut it right now before it airs because it's genuinely a really bad idea. Seriously. Taylor replied, Guys, that is absolutely false. To be an ally is to understand the difference between advocating and baiting. Anyone trying to twist this positivity into something it isn't needs to calm down. It costs zero dollars to not step on our gowns. On June 17th, Taylor released the music video for her new song. There was no kiss scene with Katy Perry but they were dressed as a burger and fries and instead held hands and hugged. Throughout the song, Taylor spoke about anti-LGBTQ behavior and expressed her support for the LGBTQ community. Here are some examples. Why are you mad when you could be glad? She purposely spelled glad with two A's, referring to the pro-LGBTQ organization GLAAD, which she donated to earlier in the month. Sunshine on the street at the parade, but you would rather be in the dark ages, Making that sign must have taken all night. Taylor calls out anti-LGBTQ protesters for their old-fashioned views and wasting their time spreading hate. She compares the Pride Parade to sunshine, a symbol of happiness and joy. And control your urges to scream about all the people you hate, cause shade never made anybody less gay. Writer Katie Menard explained this line best. She said, Gay people will still be gay, no matter how much you yell that you hate them. Taylor even ended the video by asking her fans to sign her petition for Senate support of the Equality Act. However, the song wasn't just about support for the queer community. Taylor also addressed online hate. She starts off the song by talking about hateful subtweets and confirms that it's a personal experience by saying, But I've learned the lesson that stressing and obsessing about somebody else is no fun, and snakes and stones never broke my bones. She was referring to her online feuds with Katy Perry and Kim Kardashian, 
where both stars subtweeted about her, implying she was two-faced. There were mixed reactions to Taylor's song and recent involvement in the LGBTQ community. A lot of people thought she was queer baiting for fame and money. Taylor Swift is not our queer icon. She is an offensively wealthy straight person trying to sell us rainbows during Pride to promote her own music. LOL, Taylor Swift literally only hangs out with straight people, but since it's Pride, she's releasing a video full of LGBTQ plus people? Hey Taylor Swift, writing a letter to your representatives and making a rainbow and celebrity filled music video that you released during Pride, coincidence? To sell records doesn't make you an ally. Stop appropriating gay culture under the guise of allyship. We aren't a trend. Some people felt she used LGBTQ plus celebrity cameos as props in her music video. Yeah, I might be cynical, but that Taylor Swift video left me cold. I try to think that it's purely intended, but I can't help but think it's your classic let's crack out a rainbow for Pride Month stuff, but on a Taylor Swift level, that means getting queer people to be set dressing. I love the song, but as a lesbian, I felt she used them. I feel like they were props, all of them, the whole theme. And a few people spoke up about the stereotypes of the protesters and LGBTQ plus life. The fact that she really depicted anti-LGBT protesters as hicks? Girl, many are very privileged people in high places in society. This issue is too important for caricatures. So disappointed with this song by Taylor Swift, she managed to incorporate every negative stereotype and connotation. I find her depiction of LGBTQ life insulting and her depiction of trailer parks rude. Another person pointed out Taylor's hypocrisy. So Taylor Swift's new song video is calming down and not throwing shade, yet she stereotypes the protesters. Guess calming down only applies if you agree with her views. Disappointed. Some people had mixed thoughts about Taylor's choice to wear the colors of the bi flag throughout her music video. Taylor Swift wearing a wig the colors of the bi flag, but sure, this isn't her coming out album. Taylor Swift basically was the bi flag during You Need to Calm Down. I'm honestly 70% sure she just came out. Others defended Taylor. If giving money to LGBTQ plus charities, showing up to LGBTQ plus celebrations, and dedicating a whole music video to the Equality Act isn't enough, I don't know what is. As someone who works closely with many of the organizations Taylor Swift directly supports, I'll just add that she has been in our court for years, donating her time and treasure to LGBTQ causes. This isn't a new era, it's who she is. Credit where credit's due. Can all these fake woke Twitter accounts stop writing 280 character think pieces about how Taylor Swift performed at Stonewall to promote her new album when she literally performed one song from 2014 because her friend asked her to and then left? We need allies. She's arguably the biggest pop star on the planet. I just think we need to remember what a growth arc she's had over the past few years. I applaud her. And many LGBTQ plus people love the song. Thank you for giving me a song that lets me scream Shay never made anyone less gay as loud as I need to. I can't wait to yell cause Shay never made anybody less gay at tour. One person was conflicted. You can acknowledge that Taylor Swift's song is important and great for LGBTQ plus representation, sure. But you also have to acknowledge how painfully obvious it's being used as a way for her to do a rebrand and sell her music to a new audience. Around the same time, Eugene Lee Yang from the Try Guys also released a music video. Eugene used the video to come out as gay. Eugene explained, I created this music video as my personal way of coming out as a proud gay man who has many unheard, specific stories to tell. I withheld because of fear and shame shaped by my background, but I promised to give my full truth in the rest of my life's work. Eugene focused more on telling a story through dance and visuals. He tells a story through the colors of the pride flag. The red scene tells a story of nature. The scene shows how Eugene's family confined him to strict gender rules because it's what is deemed natural or normal. The orange scene tells a story of nurture. This scene uses a powerful social setting, the church, to show that environments that are supposed to be nurturing can be confusing and difficult for an LGBTQ person. In this scene, we see Eugene forced to keep up a controlled behavior. The yellow scene tells a story of love. This scene shows Eugene discovering his sexuality and appreciation for those who still support his sexuality. The green scene tells a story about community. This scene shows how Eugene found his place in the LGBTQ community and how some people won't support him. The blue scene tells a story about hate. This scene shows that no matter how hurt Eugene is, 
His family has strict views on sexuality that he is afraid will tear him away from the family. The purple scene tells a story about pride. This scene shows that Eugene is proud and unapologetic as he walks through a mix of people who accept or reject him. The scene ends with Eugene sitting with his new queer family. Eugene also created a fundraising campaign along with his music video. He's raised over $100,000 for The Trevor Project, a national organization providing crisis intervention and management services to LGBTQ people. The video was very well received, with many people showing support. This is incredible, powerful, beautiful, and important. Congrats Eugene Lee Yang on this amazing piece of art, and thank you for being strong enough to be this vulnerable with the world. He's like a gay Disney prince, and it's all so beautiful and sad, and I'm really proud of him for coming out for such a great reason and in such a stunning way. Thank you so much for making this video. I'm in tears. You're making this world a better and safer place for my children. Many people compared Eugene's eloquent music video to Taylor Swift's quirky music video. Instead of watching Taylor Swift's new music video in which she, a straight white woman, exploits queer artists and entertainers for profit, stream Eugene Lee Yang's new video on the Try Guys channel and donate to The Trevor Project. I hope Eugene Lee Yang coming out as gay overshadows whatever the f it is that Taylor Swift is doing. How is Taylor Swift's new song supposed to be the gay anthem when Eugene Lee Yang a. Exists, and B. Did that with his coming out video. And with all the commotion going on around Taylor Swift's new pop song, drag icon Lady Bunny had something to say. On June 22nd, Lady Bunny said this on Instagram, I'm not a fan of Taylor Swift. Is she using gay causes to promote her new song? Sure, just like Born This Way, I Kissed a Girl and Madonna's I Rise did. I have no desire to get into one of those silly, my diva is better than yours discussions. We all have different tastes. My question is this, regardless of why she's doing it, has Taylor Swift done more for the gay community than most within that community? She donated $113,000. We're not all pop stars with that kind of money to donate, but did we give any to support our own causes? Love her music or hate it, Swift created a petition which has now been signed by several presidential candidates. Did you sign or create one? That's free to do. Taylor's petition supports the Equality Act, which bans discrimination against LGBT people for housing and work. The act passed the House of Representatives in May. When I posted about it on Feces Book, my post got a couple likes. My next post, about a Florida man on meth having with an alligator, got dozens of likes and shares. So despite what we may suspect is the reason Taylor is suddenly an ally, she's doing more than most people in our community. Why does it take a pop star's video to get us discussing our own rights? Because gay media is so dumbed down? And is gay media dumbed down because they know what we clicked on before, and are therefore just providing us with more polarizing celeb content? I've just looked at the homepage of several leading gay sites. Most articles are celebrity gossip. Without Taylor, would most even know about the Equality Act? Are the gay celebrities in the video posting about it? There's an election coming up. If we make no demands from politicians, then we get nothing from them, even if they win with our support. They need our votes now. And if we pay so little attention to our rights that a pop video sparks the widest debate on it, then that screams to politicians, ignore our community, since we barely even care about ourselves. Whether I like her music or not, Taylor's petition is a demand. Where is yours? That seems to be the end of the debate for now. So, what's the big issue? Taylor Swift's misrepresentation of the LGBTQ community in comparison to Eugene's representation of the LGBTQ community, and the commercialization of Pride Month. There are numerous misrepresentations within Taylor Swift's new song. First is stereotyping and degrading groups of people in her music video. Even though many people want to support the LGBTQ community, many can also agree that degrading the homophobic protesters wasn't the best way to approach the video. The protesters were depicted as caricatures, dressed in cheap clothes and had terrible grammar. They were meant to represent the working class or lower. The LGBTQ community, on the other hand, were depicted as rich and glamorous, hanging out at a trailer park party. However, many LGBTQ people are from the working class and don't have the privilege that many of these celebrity cameos have. 
In fact, according to the Williams Institute, LGBTQ plus Americans are nearly twice as likely to be unemployed than non-LGBTQ plus people. A writer for The Independent explains, Homophobia exists at all levels of the class system, and to pretend that the enemy is in double denim with an American flag on its t-shirt does a disservice to the queer community. Another issue people had was Taylor comparing online hate to anti-LGBTQ plus hate crimes. At the beginning of her song, she sings about her experience with online hate when other stars subtweeted about her. In the past, Katy Perry and Kim Kardashian indirectly called Taylor Regina George in sheep's clothing and a snake. The song quickly pivots from online hate to criticizing hate speech and hate crimes with the line, Shane never made anybody less gay. She seems to be comparing the hateful subtweets to hateful behavior from anti-LGBTQ plus protesters. She even asks the protesters, why are you mad when you could be glad? It's a very playful jab which doesn't necessarily end homophobia in the same way she ended her feud with Katy Perry. Taylor Swift also misuses the slang word shade in an attempt to describe their hateful behavior. The term throwing shade comes from the black and Latino gay communities. It was first introduced into straight culture in a 1990 documentary called Paris is Burning, which was about black and Latino drag queens in New York City. The term made its way into all cultures from the LGBTQ community and was popularized on the TV show RuPaul's Drag Race. According to Urban Dictionary, throwing shade is to insult or judge someone discreetly or indirectly. And according to Dictionary.com, shade can have two connotations, one being offensive and another being playful, carrying a sense of humor and irony. This offended a lot of people. They explained, homophobia isn't shade, sweetie. They want us gone. It's different. You can't get more trivializing of homophobia as just calling it shade. I don't think it was made at all maliciously, but it's just dumb and a bit thoughtless. Homophobes aren't throwing shade. They're hateful and violent and trying to take away human rights. A writer for The Atlantic further explained, there are many ways to describe a parent who disowns a trans kid or a lawmaker who tries to nullify same-sex marriages, or a church member who crashes a gay soldier's funeral, shady isn't one. One person mocked the situation. Honestly, I think it's hilarious that Taylor Swift used shade to mean homophobia, like, that's the tea, sis. The Westboro Baptist Church was totally throwing shade at their last anti-pride protest. However, some people thought shade was referring to the literal shade from the sun. I thought it was because the previous line is about the sun at the parade, so making literal shade by blocking the sunshine of the parade isn't going to make gay people shine any less bright. She used shade not as in criticizing, but as in literally shades, right? You know, like the opposite of sunshine on the street at the parade? Still, the majority of people interpreted the term shade as the slang term. So why is Eugene getting a pass for dropping a music video during Pride Month? while Taylor Swift is getting ridiculed. Eugene's music video produced something very relatable and very common among LGBTQ people. The journey of discovering your sexuality and the difficulties of coming out as a gay person. Like one person said, it felt like his story was our story, and even people who identify as straight were able to understand the message. As a straight man who had no idea what kind of things you went through, I bawled some tears, man. This was so beautiful. Not once did you say I'm gay, but you showed it. Taylor Swift, on the other hand, isn't bi, lesbian, or trans with a story to tell. She had a powerful message to get across. Hate speech and homophobia won't stop gay people from being gay, but it was poorly executed. From the way celebrity cameos were used, to comparing homophobia to throwing shade, the video became a touchy subject for many in the LGBTQ community. And arguably one of the biggest concerns in the video is the end scene where Taylor Swift and Katy Perry hug and make up. People argued it took away from the message of the song. The You Need to Calm Down music video ends with Katy Perry and Taylor Swift ending their feud, and I simply can't understand how that has anything to do with the LGBTQ community. Like, let me make a gay anthem as a straight white female and then talk about myself in it. No. Taylor Swift has me so conflicted. I love it. I hate it. Isn't Katy Perry also straight? Taylor Swift new music video. I love straight people inserting themselves in gay spaces. Why not you and an actual lesbian at the end? Why Katy Perry? Daily Beast writer Jordan Julian described the end scene as a reconciliation between Swift and longtime rival Katy Perry, two straight women detracting from the pro-gay rights theme. 
The reason Pride Month is a touchy subject for many is because it originated as a riot in 1969 at Stonewall Inn. In the 60s, men could be arrested for wearing drag and women could be arrested for wearing less than three articles of feminine clothing. However, on June 28, 1969, LGBTQ individuals resisted and rioted against the police. This made history for the gay rights movement. Eventually, Pride Month became a time to reflect and celebrate how far the community has come. But it's not always an easy celebration because there are many anti-LGBTQ protesters who show up at events, and some people even commit hate crimes. Over time, companies saw Pride Month and Pride Parades as a way to market themselves to a new demographic, the LGBTQ community. So they began sponsoring floats or creating Pride-branded things. Sometimes it has a positive impact, other times it's just branding with no real support towards LGBTQ issues. For example, Adidas sells rainbow merchandise during Pride Month, but it was also a major sponsor for the 2018 World Cup in Russia, a country with anti-LGBTQ laws. This takes away from the purpose of Pride Month being a political movement, and a movement that still needs support. In Taylor's case, people are upset that she created a pride anthem as a marketing move. People don't trust her allyship toward the LGBTQ community because she stayed silent about LGBTQ rights during the 2016 US election. And in 2006, she used being gay as an insult in her song Picture to Burn, where she says, So go and tell your friends that I'm obsessive and crazy. That's fine, I'll tell mine that you're gay. However, despite her angsty song and staying silent during the 2016 election, Taylor has showed support for the community numerous times dating back to 2014. In October 2014, Taylor released a song called Welcome to New York after gay marriage became legal in New York. At the time, people described it as the equality anthem because of the line, and you can want who you want, boys and boys and girls and girls. She explained in an interview with The Talk. I wrote the song kind of kind of following the uh, when, when gay marriage became legal in New York. So many of my friends uh, had to be kind of scrutinized for who they were in love with, you know, from the time they came out. You know, I didn't want to make a big deal of it because I don't think it should be a big deal who you love. In October 2016, Taylor helped raise money for the maintenance of the Stonewall National Monument. In August 2017, she signed a guitar for the Black Tie Dinner Auction to raise money for the North Texas LGBTQ community. In January 2018, she wrote a sweet note to a newlywed lesbian couple. In June 2018, she stopped her concert in Chicago to speak directly to the LGBTQ community. And I want to send my love and respect out to everybody who in their journey in their life hasn't yet felt comfortable enough to come out and uh, and may you do that in your own time and may we end up in a, a world where everyone can live and love equally and no one has to be afraid to be vulnerable and say how they feel. In February 2019, she performed King of My Heart for a newly engaged gay couple. In April 2019, she donated $113,000 to the Tennessee Equality Project, a nonprofit organization that actively fights anti LGBTQ legislation in the state of Tennessee. And, of course, Taylor's most recent support by donating to GLAAD, writing a letter to Lamar Alexander to pass the Equality Act, and performing at Stonewall Inn for the 50th anniversary of the riots. Even if all of this is a marketing ploy, some say corporate pride isn't such a bad thing. Helene Kushner, freelance writer for Entity Mag, argues, It is important to emphasize the positive aspects of mass visibility. If you are not near gay culture or exposed to it on a daily basis, then the branded Pride merch could come off as a bit laughable. But Pride burgers or rainbow fries actually have a lot of meaning to a little voguing femboy in the Bible Belt being told homosexuality is a sin at school or church. This little future RuPaul's Drag Race star seeing a rainbow on their box of fries the next time their homophobic family whips through the local drive through with gleaming eyes full of hope is so much more important than my own moral integrity against corporate America. More acceptance also means more awareness. Taylor Swift may not have had bad intentions, but many can agree her song poorly represented the LGBTQ community, from the trailer park party to the misuse of queer terms. Despite the critiques, Taylor has done a lot behind the scenes to help the LGBTQ community from 2014 until now. 
Even if all of this is a business move to sell music, many argue it will have a positive effect on the LGBTQ community. Jeremy Blacklow, the director of entertainment media at GLAAD, said the impact of Taylor shouting out the organization in her song has been amazing. And Taylor Swift fans have been donating to GLAAD, with many of the donations being $13, Taylor's favorite number. Forbes journalist Hugh McIntyre argues, It may all be a marketing ploy, but You Need to Calm Down will have a measurable, positive effect on LGBT nonprofits, performers, and the gay, lesbian, and especially transgender youth who need the support more than ever. Her latest promotional push wasn't perfect, but it certainly shows welcome progress. To further explain, one Redditor said, There's always going to be double standards in the pop industry, though. Chris Martin promotes environmental causes, yet takes a lot of private jets. Ariana Grande's pride flag protest during the Coachella performance. She still played it, took the money, and helped sell tickets for the anti-LGBT owner of the festival. So it's difficult to really attribute just how sincere an artist is being. Pop music is a business, and the idea is to sell records. If, in the instance of Taylor Swift's current song, if it reaches and speaks to someone, especially a young person who might be struggling, and they get something out of it, then it doesn't really matter if Taylor is being sincere here or not. What do you think about the controversy? Do you think Taylor Swift crossed the line with her Pride song? Let me know in the comments below.